Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I put a photo of this book online. I discovered it in like amongst all of my stuff. I wrote it when I was 11 for a grade six assignment. And I've been meaning to sit down and read it. And while I was in the process of deciding to do that, I thought, you know what? Why don't I record me reading it? Um, if it's crap, delete the recording. But if it's like semi-good, like, wow, an 11-year-old wrote that kind of good, then I'll put it online. And and it'll be like, this is my support system of getting through my book. But really, it's like a humble brag of, wow, look how well I used to write. Um, I think... The best way to do this so that we don't drown in 11-year-old me writing junk is I'm going to put it up chapter by chapter as a video, like release a chapter every couple of days. Um, But if you get so compelled by the first chapter, what I'll do is I'll record it all in one hit and I'll put them up on like a podcast thing I'm trying right now called Scotty Writes. Just I'm challenging myself to write a little like bite-sized story for Instagram for this podcast every week. So I'll chuck it all up on there and um, let's see how we go. Um, The book is called Bad News. It's by me, Scott McDonald. I don't have Scotty there um, because this is a time in my life where I didn't like the nickname Scotty. Um, also small D instead of capital D in my name, didn't realize the styling that I was going to go for as I got older. Uh, so here it is bad news. It's called, uh, the blurb of the book is Scott is the local journalist. Telling prophetic for 11 year old me. So he's seen some scary things. I mean, Don't journalists see scary things? But this is definitely the most scariest. If Scott reveals this mystery, it it might really amaze him about some people. (laughs) If he lives to judge them. That's a really good blurb, other than the most scariest, and also has seen some scary things. Um, That's a really good blurb. Judging by that, we're going to enjoy this book. Um, my little bio, Scott McDonald is at and attends St. Thomas Primary School. This is his first book and he enjoyed writing it. I mean, that's good. It's good to know (laughs) that the author enjoyed writing the book. Um, all right. Chapter one. This book was written for the class of six, seven at St. Thomas School. Bad news. Scott McDonald. Chapter one. The Rumour, 2000. I think it's relevant. 2000 is obviously the year it was set in. Scott, can you go and talk to that guy who wants compensation on that motorcycle accident that happened about a month ago? Well, um, Dan, I was about to read this fax about the mass kidnappings happening in Surfer's Paradise and seems the murders. About to read this fax. Who sent that fax? Hold! You said kidnapping? Yeah, whatever. The kidnappers have come here. Not possible! exclaimed Dan. Well, think about it. Harjan Hill would be the best place to come. I mean, we have a RAF base packed with explosives, endless bush, God knows how many springs, and best of all, unexpecting residents. Okay, research it. Hi, welcome to another hectic day at Harjan Hill 6. Harjan Hill is a small town, and by small, I mean small. We have only about 2,000 permanent residents. Most of them have, or had, something to do with the RAF base, which sits on the outskirts of Harjan Hill. But you always see the big planes. My favourite is the F-111. Okay, so I seem to be writing this like it's a diary. Okay. Originally, Harjan Hill and the Mission Valley, Mitchan, it's like Mikkan Valley, the valley running next to Harjan Hill, were used as army barracks, but now they are established towns. No, and you wouldn't believe it, there's this little private romantic resort overlooking the Mitchan Valley. It was actually an army air force lookout. Is that cool or not? Rhetorical, obviously. Anyway, 
You're probably wondering how I know so much. Well, I'm the local journo. <laughs> okay. And as you've heard, I'm going to read this facts. Okay. Because you've come in listening to my conversation with who I assume is my boss, Dan. Okay. I'm going to read this facts about some kidnapper that might be here in Halgen Hill. Oh, and that guy was Dan, who is my boss. My other workmates are John, Joe, Pam, Dan, and Mick. Interestingly, I work with a Joe and a John Paul, who are both journalists. I'm the senior journalist. Okay, yeah, definitely, they don't... I'm not the senior... But in this story, I am the senior journalist. You know who Dan is. Pam is my secretary. Okay, senior journalists get secretaries. Amazing. And the rest of them are just journalists. Tonight, I have to represent Halgen Hill 6 at an executive meeting at Fish and Chicks, which is a restaurant in the Mitchin Valley. Scott, 4.30. Thanks, Dan. What the devil is that guy doing? He has this big garbage bag and he's walking beside the highway that runs next to the raft base. Weird. Whoa, look at those explosives. There is like this huge shed full of explosives that look like they're about to be loaded onto this massive F-111 that is taxiing the runway. Boy, is it huge. Welcome to my house. Now, bye, I am having a shower. Okay, so I seem to think that the story is like a documentary following me. This would be a good place to finish the chapter, but apparently I don't. Now, in case you're wondering, the meeting starts at 6.30, so I have to leave at 6, because it takes half an hour to get to the Mitchin Valley. 10 minutes down, nope, sorry, 20 minutes down, 10 minutes across. The range is fairly steep and windy. At least once a fortnight, a vehicle will crash there. <laughs> oh, I mean, you'd think, you'd think that'd be the story I'd be chasing as the senior journalist. Once we had a 10-car pile-up, Five people died and seven were injured. <laughs> what? The cause was a truck pulling out in front of a car in the rain. And now I am slowly going <laughs> down. <laughs> what a transition. The actual speed is 70 kilometers an hour. But I usually do about 110 kilometers an hour. Pretty fast. And it's easy to get away with it too because speed cameras can't be set there. They topple over. So I'm talking about this death trap of a hill and bragging about how I do 40 k's an hour over the speed limit. <laughs> because there's some flaw with the speed camera system that they can't go there. <laughs> talking about the range I'm on, it's fairly quiet this time of night. I think it's 6 o'clock, it'd be peak hour. Anyway... But let me tell you, on my way home, trucks will be ro roaring everywhere. That's why the servo on the servo on the range petrol station staff are all running around like a bunch of ants that are being harassed by humans. <laughs> Your boy knows how to write metaphors. I'm currently passing the green cow paddocks of Lake Milk, Australia's largest milk supplier, owned by multi-millionaire Chris Lake. That's somebody I went to school with. In primary school and high school. I know Chris really well. Me and him are great friends. Oh yeah, his personal assistant is nice too. His name is John. Funny character. Okay. Here it is. Fish and chicks. I love that there's an executive meeting happening at a fish and chip shop. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that my 11 year old brain is like 6 o'clock is late at night. There'll be no one driving. And also fish and chicks. I mean, executives meet at fish and chip shops. <laughs> it was home to Colonel Lodaho during World War II. Then it became heritage listed. Then a Mr. Josh Felix, another person I went to school with. This whole story smacks of a defamation lawsuit. Signed a contract to restore it. And then Josh turned it into a restaurant now because that is the only record of the building. No one can officially say how old the building is, but building inspectors say... It's over a hundred years old. I don't know if that sentence did make sense or not, but there you go. Now, I can't say what happens in the meeting, so bye for now. Obviously, I can't report in this fictional story about the meeting. 
That meeting went pretty good for us, and I met Kerry Packer. <laughs> Relevant. Uh, you idiot. Some dipstick driving a white van just cut me off, turning into the servo. Oh, and I was right. There are trucks everywhere, by the way. I was right. There are trucks everywhere. Most of them going to one of the meat suppliers in the valley. You know what I mean. Ah, oh, they've got animals on them that are going to the slaughter. I'll turn on the radio. Hi, it's Jacob. Late night request on HH105 FM. This story was written when I was 11. Hit 105 rebranded to Hit 105 like five or six years ago. This book is prophetic. HH105, and it's time for my favourite song, Under the Boardwalk. No, I yelled and almost deafened myself from echoing in the car. I turned off the radio. I obviously don't like the song Under the Boardwalk. When I got home, I got changed and slipped into bed. <clears throat> Probably another place for a chapter marker, and yet, there is not one. Good morning, it's 6am, I'm Andy Mack for HH105 FM News. Last night, a woman was kidnapped at a Harlgen Hill address. That's all the info we have currently on the situation. It's a hell of a news story. Burr, 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 burr. Hello? Yeah, hi, Scott, it's Dan. Oh, hi. Scott, those kidnappings. Oh, the story's about me, I forgot. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my way in. Bye. See ya. Well, there you go. I was there. I was ready. I woke up. I heard the news and I was out of there. Brr, hello. Hi, it's Madeline. Oh, hi. Are you investigating those kidnappings? Yeah, why? Could I come into work with you? If you want. Okay, I'll drive around to your place. Okay, bye. I don't know who Madeline is. I hung up the phone. Good morning, it's Andy Mack for HH105 FM News. It's 7 o'clock. That's the hose? Okay. Hi, Ben. Hi, Scott. Okay, we can investigate. Okay, so I've arrived at work and everyone's like, great, now we can finally investigate. The senior journalist has arrived. Interestingly, when I arrive at work most days, I say to the newsroom, it's okay, guys, I'm here, we can do the news. That's a joke. But obviously, when I was 11, I thought it was going to be real. We all went in different directions. Madeline went inside. I went out to the back, and Ben, who is the local cop, stayed out the front. Oh, we're arriving at the crime scene. And Ben was waiting for me and was like, Oh, hi, you've arrived. We can investigate it now. Like, as if they needed the journalist there. Anyway, about an hour passed and nothing happened, when all of a sudden... Bang! Oh, expletive. Like, literally, it's written, like, question mark, exclamation mark, at sign, hashtag. Ben yelled. Oh, that's the end of the chapter. Um, if you search on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, Scotty Writes, you will find me reading the rest of the story on that podcast. Otherwise, give it a couple of days. Let that really digest. Really start to freak out about what that big bang was. Um, and I'll get into the next chapter.